Welcome, Jan, to Toronto. Thank you for taking the time today to share of your life's uh, work on this beautiful fall day. Thank you. You don't need much introduction, but you can tell us a little bit about your early years and under what circumstances you first encountered homeopathy. It was uh, after I finished my medical degree as a doctor and uh, I planned to become a general practitioner. But it was a waiting time before it could start, and then I thought, okay, I'll do some courses uh, in uh, vitamin and mineral therapy and acupuncture, and later also homeopathy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know much about homeopathy, I thought it was a kind of herb therapy, and uh, I didn't know really what was the depth of it. But okay. when I studied it, then I was reading stories of people not only getting better with complaints, but also feeling better in general and feeling as they were for 20 years ago before the disease started. And that struck me. Then I was thinking, well, I've never heard that in normal medicine that that can be, that that happens. Right. And uh, then I thought, is that true? I, I was skeptic at that moment too. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, oh, this is not normal medicine, but well, well, that's true, everyone should know it, you know, because that's what you want to do as a doctor, that people feel healthy again, you know, that they feel like they were before, right? and that they have joy again, and you feel happy, and that's, that's what the stories were telling. Of course, there were not all the, the cases were like that, but there were stories like that, mm -hmm. and that intrigued me, so, and I, I couldn't let it go down, so I had to study it. Right. And what was your belief system at the time? Were you a strict scientific type of person or open to more spiritual endeavors? For me, that's not a contradiction. For okay. me, that's the same. A real scientist is open to everything. Mm -hmm. When you limit yourself as a scientist to experiences, then you're not a scientist. The scientist is always open to what's there. If it's spiritual or whatever, or of material, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see myself as uh, limited. So I think I'm, I'm always being a scientist. Right. So uh, what was the first thing about homeopathy that uh, really intrigued you once you actually got into it? That, that's that effect that you can really heal people. And that's, that's what I'm always trying to do with every patient, not only that the complaints go, mm -hmm. but that they, that they feel they have old energy again, right. and they feel happy, and they're not bothered by all kinds of circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, of course, that the philosophy is, is quite beautiful, uh, especially in the theoretical part, mm -hmm. not in the materia medica part. You know, the description of the remedies is, from the scientific point of view, is awful. It's a rubbish. It's a bunch of unrelated facts. So that's not beautiful. Uh, in science, something beautiful is also very simple. In that sense, the law of similars, like cures like, that's a very simple law and that, that has a beauty in it. Right. So that attracts me, but first of, of course it has to work, otherwise but, but yeah, you can make be a beautiful thought, but when it doesn't work in practice, it's not science. It's uh, maybe art or whatever, but not mm -hmm. science. So it has to work too. Right. So you've uh, become a pioneer in classification, mm -hmm. right, the idea of classification, and it does date back uh, right back to Hahnemann. Mm -hmm. But uh, what made you start again after a long hiatus? Uh, to think in those terms of classification, right? There's Hahnemann, there's a little bit later on, but not much of any systematic thinking mm. in this direction. Mm. Well, there has always been. Uh, uh, a lot of homeopaths forget that Hahnemann started the first classification with miasms, mm -hmm. uh, which is a classification in its own right. And also Kent, you know, he describes uh, combination remedies like calcium silicate and without approving. And also, George Vitoulkas was describing Kaliums. So, it's not very uncommon in, in homeopathy at all, mm -hmm. uh, although it has never been done very systematically. Right. But from my point of view, classification is, is basic for science. Without classification, you cannot have science. Mm -hmm. Even our normal knowledge, our own language is classification. When we talk about a cow, it's a classification. You know, every word is a classification. 
So, you, we cannot do without. Our whole materia medica is words, and they're all classifications. So, the idea that we can do without classification and be completely empirical is nonsense. And that, that's a, uh, an experience that also Einstein had. He said, epistemology without science becomes an empty scheme. So what he says, you can, when you only experience, but when you cannot classify it, when you cannot give it a reference, then it's empty. You have nothing from the scientific point of view. Right. But for me, classification has been so normal that I was, in a way, surprised that people could be against it. But I knew at that time that I was thinking, what will the other homeopath say about this? <laughs> because there was no proving really nothing, mm -hmm. only classification. But I had a feeling I had to do it, I had to try it. Right. Now your first seminal contribution was uh, to apply the idea of classification in a highly systematic way to the entire periodic table. Mm -hmm. So what made you think about taking on such a more systematic project? And specifically, how did you come up with these, the themes for the series and the stages? Mm -hmm. Now, the themes of the series were already a little bit there. Um, you know, I compared first in the Iron series, Ferrum and Mangalam, and they had a similar kind of quality of duty and work, and Kalim has that too. Mm -hmm. And the Gold series, there was kind of heaviness and responsibility. So gradually it became more and more clear that there was a basic theme in each row. Right. Um, in the beginning, I, I skipped the, the upper roads like carbon series and silica series because they were too vague. But then I thought, okay, but when the lower rows have, have a theme, then the upper must have that too. Okay. So I started searching for what that could be and comparing it. And then, of course, I had already uh, an idea that carbon had something to do with the father. So I thought, okay, that maybe it's more to do with the earlier stages in life that you become a child. So at and, some point things clicked in terms of yeah. the stages being related to each other in yeah. terms of human development? And that came then as a result of that. Right. As a sudden insight or a gradual... That was a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, was not one point. And the whole thing is that it's often not one, one insight. Sometimes it is, but um, I'll tell another example of that. But often it's, you know, you have an idea and then you apply it and then it works and then you get confirmation. And then I start thinking, okay, but when this has that, then the others in the group must have that too, probably. And I extend that, try that too. Again, uh, use it in cases and then look it up in the materia medica and toxicology, what fits and what not and what I can extract. So it's, it's a process of a circular thing of science, uh, generalizations, mm -hmm. and experiences. Right. Which is the basis of science, anyhow. Right. Okay, and what with regard to the uh, stages? The stages were a bit difficult in the beginning, because I remember that one of the crucial aspects was that it was wondering how Platina and Orum, which were very responsible and strong, and, and Platina even haughty, how that could be connected to barium, you know, because they are on the same row. But barium is a, a, Seemingly a coward, opposite. A com right. well, completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then I suddenly realized, but that's that's the theme, that it is just the opposite of the same thing of power. Okay. And then I remember that at one moment that was real insight, going back to that insight, mm -hmm. that I got the idea, okay, it's an evolution. Okay. It starts with very powerless and a very weak uh, possibilities, mm -hmm. and then gaining power and strength, and then after that, losing it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that, that was a uh, kind of eureka uh, experience, okay. quite sudden. Right, and then subsequently you filled out the details yeah, yeah. of all the stages, and that yeah. I presume took a yeah. while. Yeah, that took um, a year or so uh, okay. to get it. Uh, already, once you have the idea, it goes quite fast. Mm -hmm. But then all the precisions and all the details, that takes more, uh, more time. Right. So having discovered the stages and series, then what do you make of the 
actual existence of a correspondence between an increasing atomic complexity and mm -hmm. some parallel process in human evolution, because it's quite an astounding uh, discovery and not an obvious one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started with uh, seeing the development of the themes, you know, when you connect gold series to being the leader and, and, and carbon series as being the child, mm -hmm. then you see already the, the age difference. Right. And then you have the working uh, people, uh, carbon series, mm -hmm. uh, not carbon series, iron series, which is adulthood. And then you see uh, gradually the whole age coming uh, through it. And then, of course, the next thing is then you see the symbolism of it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a beautiful thing that, you know, you wouldn't expect that in elements would be a reflection of how life is. Right. But it, it is. It's just show through, shine yeah. through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's probably also that all those themes, they come back in all kinds of different uh, fields in, in the, in, on, on the Earth and in the universe. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is that you have an evolution of something coming into existence, coming to full blossom and then disappearing again. That's basically how the whole Big Bang is and, and it comes back to nothing in the end, I think. But that's every life goes like that, our life goes like that, the lives of animals, even the lives of uh, stars and suns and planets goes like that. They come into existence and they disappear again in the end. Right, so definitely uh major case of parsimony, yeah. the idea that the simple single explanation yeah. can count for many yeah. different phenomena. Yeah. You have said in the past that all the elements are projections of possibilities, of talents and problems. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, how did you come up with your peculiar style of describing Materia Medica, where you have, uh, you break down the remedy into several themes and then explore all the possible permutations, mm -hmm. combinations of the uh, remedy. That's also a gradual uh, development. Mm -hmm. Once you have the themes of the series and of the stages, you can make all kinds of combinations. Mm -hmm. And there are several aspects of them. Uh, sometimes it's a talent aspect and some, sometimes it's a failure aspect of uh, an element or a stage or a theme and it's always there there's always a talent in something and there's also a failure in something uh, even when you look at a baby you, you could say it's a failure uh, the baby can hardly do anything but he has a very charming thing you know people they, they love babies because the baby has something which is very maybe the symbol of innocence so Projecting your innocence into life is a talent. Once you see it, right. and then in the beginning you see one aspect, one expression, mm -hmm. and then it comes the next patient, and he's a bit different, and he shows other aspects of the same remedy, the same element. But when you look at it from the point of view of the essence, basically it's the same. Mm -hmm. And that's your main criticism of traditional materia medica, that it's often one-sided and that the other side remains undiscovered for long? In a way, what I try to do is extract out of the materia medica the essence. Mm -hmm. Because my experience is that a big part of the materia medica, as it is from the past, is incorrect. Now, you coined the term uh, perfinity mm -hmm. to represent uh, the idea that materially, meaning chemically or biologically similar substances, are likely to have similar homeopathic mm -hmm. pictures. Um, but in homeopathy, we also encounter homeopathic groups of uh, substances that are not related materially. For mm -hmm. example, as Manjalavori has done, say, mm -hmm. with sea remedies, mm -hmm. some of which are from the sea, some of which are not from the sea, but somehow related mm -hmm. to the theme. Um, and also we can look at uh, different kingdoms and how, uh, say, gold, uh, eagle, lion and so on have something similar that could be confused with each other if we just thought um, in terms of the scientific classification alone. Could you discuss the similarities and differences between uh, these approaches and yours? Um, many questions. So I'll first start with affinity. Um, it's, I coined it, but I've skipped it later on, because basically it's just another expression of classification. 
It means when you have a class, then all the members of the class will have similar symptoms, more or less. Okay. Otherwise, it's useless to make the class. Then you, you can make the class cow, but when you put sheep in it, it's confusing. Yeah? So you try to make a class that's as good as it can be. In terms of matching the natural Yeah, matching the natural, yeah. And a great example, of course, is the periodic system. Mm -hmm. And it took them quite a long time to get it. It's only 130 years old. We think it's all from eternity, but that's not true. It's quite recent, historically yeah. seen. And it took them quite a while, and they put them together first on kind of qualities those elements had. Mm -hmm. And first in rows and then in columns. And uh, they didn't know why it had to be that way in the beginning. Yeah. But it's just on, on symptoms, on qualities that they did have. Mm -hmm. Later on, they found out that it had a real background, which is the atomic number. Mm -hmm. And that is a real sequ sequence of from 1, 2, 3, 4, and that it means the amount of protons and electrons that they had. So, good classification is always built on the essence of something, of, in the uh, case of the periodic system, on the essence of atoms. What is the essence? Mm -hmm. Just the amount of protons. Right. But in the beginning, you often don't know that. You start making a classification, and the classification brings you to the essence. And then you have a more firm structure, huh? like the periodic system is without question, basically. You have different forms, different presentations, but basically everyone is agreeing on how it should be. Right. But in the beginning, there were also discussions if there were some mistakes in it, etc., because there were things that didn't fit very well, etc. Now, the same is true also with the, uh, the classification of the plant kingdom. And they have been busy quite a long time with it, uh, and Linnaeus has started with it, and before that, also some people, but not really uh, systematically. Linnaeus was the first who did it systematically. And he put them into families, but later on he put those families also into groups. But there were a lot of botanists, and they each had their different forms of how to do that, and contradictions and similarities, etc. Mm -hmm. And the latest classification, it's the APG classification, is based on DNA analyzers. And the beauty of it is it mostly confirms what was already known. Yeah? For instance, you have the family of Solanaceae, and that was first confirmed uh, by the form that they have. Later it was confirmed by the chemicals that they contain. And also by the effects they have on people. Uh, mm -hmm. They have very similar toxic effects. But now it's also confirmed by the DNA. Right. So you see that when you have a good classification, different uh, approaches lead to the same classification. Mm -hmm. And that's how it should be. And that's how they also have a similar effect on people. Right. You can make all kinds of groups. Eh? You can also make groups of sea remedies or climbers or carnivorous remedies. And that is okay to do. Uh, but then you take one aspect and build on that the classification. Whereas I think it's better to take to go to the essence and see where that classification, where that what that brings in classification. Meaning, by essence, you mean the natural classification yeah. of the of the substance. Yeah. For instance, and when you take carnivorous plants, mm -hmm. they come from very different regions in mm -hmm. uh, the botanical taxonomy. Right, and yet some people claim that they are very similar yeah. homeopathically. So, what do you do with that? Yeah, and and that's true. So you can have a group of the carnivorous plants, mm -hmm. and they have an aspect of phase seven. But phase seven, when you look at that in the periodic, in the botanical system, mm -hmm. or at least in the plant theory, how I do it, it's everywhere in the plant kingdom. Every right. group can have his carnivorous plants or parasitic plants because they're also in phase seven. So there is some aspect of it which is true, mm -hmm. but it's only one aspect. And then you want to have more aspect to see the whole of the classification. The same you can do, for instance, with lion and eagle, right? or those kind of animals. They also have a, a carnivorous aspect, so they're also in phase seven. 
So you can see all kinds of qualities in different forms in different kingdoms, mm -hmm. and you can group them. That's that's no problem to do that. Mm -hmm. But I want to go further. I want to make a complete classification. Okay. So your goal is, I guess, is to is a scientific, general scientific yeah. goal as opposed to a clinically useful uh, focus. And you hope, of course, that it will be also clinically useful at the same time. I think it's even more clinical useful because then you don't only have one aspect, but you have several aspects to, right. to go for. So that makes it more clear how to differentiate the groups. Mm -hmm. And that's what the good classification do. Right. Because okay. like in periodic system, the classification makes it obvious how you can differentiate all the elements. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt. And that's the goal of a good classification. Now that leads us to the next question of uh, the stages of development of a science, which uh, you've written are fact, generalization, classification theory, mm -hmm. and comprehensive theory. So could you explain uh, what you've been doing uh, with your work in, in reference to these terms, and also mm -hmm. more generally, where do you think we're at uh, mm -hmm. in homeopathy at this stage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every science, even when it's only facts, there are not just facts, I thought already in the beginning, also facts are an interpretation of an experience. So that's where science already starts. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Materia Medica, for instance, when you read in the, in the book about calcium carbonicum, there's a lot of facts, but they don't make any sense. You know, and when, when people start reading it, I do that sometimes on purpose, I, I'm reading a part of the Materia Medica. Mm -hmm. People get very easily bored within five minutes <laughs> or within two minutes. They lose track. Right. Or unless they're able to start generalizing in their mind yeah. and makes it making sense. And, yeah. of the we we think in, in sense, in meaning. Mm -hmm. We don't think as think in, in facts. Right. We, we cannot recollect facts very well. And that's, that's our scientific attitude as humans. So next step is to, to make classification between all those remedies. But what happens then is that not only you have a classification of remedies, but you also have a classification of symptoms. Because you compare the symptoms which are similar and you find the ones which are more basic. And gradually, uh, I started also to understand what's, what is an essential symptom and which are expression of symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it's more, much more easy to work with an essence symptom, with, with than with expressions, because expressions can vary enormously. Mm -hmm. So, there also there is a higher level of knowledge, mm -hmm. but it's not yet a very general level. So homeopathy is much further than most sciences. Mm -hmm. When you think of most sciences, it's only basically physics and chemistry who have evolved to a higher level of science. All the, Human sciences, they are basically in effect level of science. More observational. Observational with here and, here and there a little bit of classification, mm -hmm. but very little. And that sense, homeopathy is doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so given that homeopathy is doing so well, do you think we have a comprehensive theory yet? Not really, really comprehensive in the sense that I would like to have, but we are much better than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, the periodic system, the element theory, gave already a comprehensive idea of, of elements and minerals. Mm -hmm. But also there are a lot of things lacking because gems don't really fit into that theory. They have the quality of themselves which is not uh, represented in the element theory. But now with the plant theory you see that there is a similarity between uh, the element theory, the minerals and the plants in the sense of that you can use the same background of themes of series and stages as there is in the element theory. So they have a, a firm ground, you know, being more or less the same. Mm -hmm. But the plants have it in a more complex form. And that's what you would expect because they are more complex than minerals. Right. 